I understand that some climate scientists are suggesting to government that the situation is potentially so damaging that they'd like to see the UK global temperature record reanalyzed from scratch to clear the air. And that might not be such a bad idea, given some of the fresh concerns raised with Newsnight about the quality of the programming in question. This is the source code from the Climatic Research Unit. John Graham Cumming is a software engineer. He's not a sceptic on climate change, but he is shocked by what he's seen in the programming. He compared it with code in the same language written by NASA. Well, if you look at the NASA stuff, it's really professional. You can look at it, you can see the history. If you look at the work that's done here by the, these alleged CRU files, it's not the sort of thing you'd expect to see, certainly in commercial industry. You would not see this kind of source code because it's not clearly documented. There's no audit history of what's happened to it. So it would be below the standard you'd expect in any commercial software. Okay, and um, tell me about the uh, bug that you found in one part of the program. The programming language actually has a problem and they've put in some code to deal with that error. Unfortunately, in doing so, they've introduced another error and the, the upshot of this is that if the error occurs, the underlying error occurs, they will skip over data that they're trying to plot without any warning to the end user. So in some senses, data in here is being lost. There are also plaintive comments by one of the programmers at the University of East Anglia trying to grapple with the software. And so in, in here, he says some things like, uh, something's very wrong, it's my programming ability, isn't it? And, you know, once again, uh, it's further confirmation that my abilities are below what is required here. In fact, the programmer is disarmingly frank. He goes on, yep, my awful programming strikes again. So if you were betting billions or trillions of dollars on the basis of this code, is that something you'd be comfortable with? Uh, I don't think I would be comfortable with that because it's not obvious what it's doing and why it's doing it, and that needs to be made clear. An amateurish approach over programming doesn't necessarily undermine the unit's final results, and the government told us tonight that there's not currently a case for reanalysis of the data. But the university review announced today, chaired by a former civil servant chosen by the university itself, won't report until next spring, not soon enough perhaps to stop the Saudis or others using the row as ammunition at Copenhagen. Susan Watts reporting to discuss this. I'm joined from Liverpool by Dr. Benny Pizer, Director of the Global Warming Policy Foundation, and in the studio by Professor Robert Watson, Chief Scientific Advisor to the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Um, Robert Watson, let me come to you first. There's going to be an independent review, but don't we need now for all the raw data to be laid on the table so that people can make proper judgments on everything? Yes, we need the University of East Anglia to get permission from the Met offices around the world to get all of this data open and transparent so it can be freely analysed. I agree completely. And you worked at UEA as a professor? Correct. Yes. So, so at the moment, would you accept that part of the problem has come from the fact that you haven't had the normal process of scientific validation? You haven't been able to cross-question the scientists on the basis of their judgments? No, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has looked not only at the UEA analysis, but also the analysis is done by NASA and by NOAA and as was stated in your own program the results are basically in full agreement not only are the three data sets and the analysis in full agreement there's also the other data of rising sea levels melting glaciers melting Arctic seas all arguing very strongly that we are changing the Earth's climate. Uh, Benny Pizer is that, is that good enough for you to be able to see uh, everything that's coming out? We obviously needs this inquiry desperately. Uh, people are beginning to lose trust in uh, the scientific community, particularly the climate science community, and we are very, very pleased that the inquiry now has been set up. We've been calling for that inquiry for uh, uh, many days, and uh, we have to get to the bottom of this scandal, which is sending shockwaves around the world. Is it a scandal? Oh, it's a massive scandal. It's the biggest science scandal in living memory. Um, uh, you shed some crocodile tears there, didn't you? Because doesn't it rather help your case what? to have this scandal? I don't know what case you're talking about. Well, uh, well, uh, what I'm talking about is the fact that because you have got a scandal like this, this reinforces your rather more sceptical view on some of the data that's coming out. Well, we, we are not questioning the basic science of global warming. That's not our issue. We are, however, very concerned about 
issues like transparency, openness. Uh, the university has been asked for many, many years to share that information, that data, with independent researchers, and it has declined a freedom of information request. It has declined to share that information and data, and therefore, we don't really know what is going on. We need to know. Okay, uh, Professor Watson, do you accept that? that this is one of the worst scandals that there has been. And it's going to cast a cloud over Copenhagen. I mean, listen to what the Saudis have said. It's definitely a very unfortunate situation. It's absolutely imperative that this independent review announced today by UAA is carried out as quickly as possible. It will clearly have a cloud over the debate in Copenhagen, but the vast majority of the site, which does not rest on just this one data set, all points to the fact the Earth's climate is changing. We cannot explain those changes unless we invoke human activity. Benny, Benny Pizer used the word scandal. Would you use the word scandal? I would certainly argue that those email trails are inappropriately, uh, inappropriately phrased. But scandal? I, it's a scandal, isn't it? I would say it's an inappropriate situation that the independent review clearly has to dig into. Was there any misrepresentation of data? Was there loss of data? What was done inappropriately or not? So it's clear we need to completely look at this in an open and transparent manner. OK, and Benny Pizer, is it realistic that everything is just laid open? In the world of science, don't people work privately to some extent? No, it, we are not concerned about emails. We are concerned with basic data on which some of the climate reconstruction, the history of climate over the last thousand years has been, has been reconstructed. Let's not forget, the researchers at the University of East Anglia have essentially eliminated the medieval warm period. There, up until fairly recently, it was general, generally accepted that there was a warm period in the Middle Ages that was as warm as today, perhaps even warmer. Now, their research has cast doubt on the existence of that warm period. It's not so what about, sorry to interrupt you, but what about Professor Robert Watson's point that it's not just the University of East Anglia that has been looking at this, there are other scientists who've been looking at it and come to the same conclusion. No, we are not talking here about the modern warming period. I don't think there is much doubt about that. It's about whether it is unique uh, in the history of the last 1,000 or 2,000 years. That is the big controversy. Okay. okay, we must leave it there. I'm grateful to you both. Thank you very much for being here.